Hello everybody else, we 360 here, self-proclaimed awesomeness person on YouTube, and I'm joined by, I'm gonna say my client right here, because we are gonna be doing something. So, wow, fuck that guy, right? It's Alex. Cell phone, like seriously. Sorry Alex, I'll, I'll phone you back. Like seriously, man. Anyways, let's say hello to him. His name is Highly and Gangsta. Hello! On the interwebs, and this is his piece of crap. Well, it's it was it was really good when we, when it first came out, but it's been quite a while. So, uh, what we got here is exactly what you see. If it could actually work properly, I. Let's see if it can work. It's an AMD Athlon 2 and it's 4 core and it was originally with Windows 7 and it was originally pretty damn good. I personally owned this rig before him and, sorry for shaky cam by the way, and I added a few twists to it. I think I added additional 2 gigs of RAM. And I also added this here. It's classified GTX 560 Ti. Yeah, that's what I... That's what I implemented into this thing. I got it a brand new graphics card. It was only using onboard before. It's no EM board, so you can't really expect too, too much. But it was, it was really rocking at the time. For an AMD. Well, AMDs were actually fairly good at that point. But, when you're cheap like me, it was either this or spend an extra $200 at the time to get myself an FX board. This was in the family and it needed a home so I decided to purchase it myself. So, we're gonna pick, that's the introduction here, so we are going to pick this up at the outside. And that is where we're going to blow the shit out of this dust. Because as you can see right there, it says Cooler Master. And right on those blades, look at them. Look at those blades. Ugh. Look at that dust. Yeah, I've been Ugh. negligent to get the dust out of there for a long time. Yeah, it's been a long that be, while. That could be the reason why my computer's not operating the way it should right now is because... <coughs> That's the one thing I never do. The one thing you're supposed to do, and anyone will tell you this, if you want optimum performance on your computer, you make sure every piece of hardware in your computer is totally dusted out. Because you get too much dust on your processor fan, what could end up happening is you could blow your processor fan and those are expensive to replace. So why spend the money and why knock yourself out when you don't have to? You could easily buy just a can of dust off or whatever, get rid of the dust, and be on your way. And everything will work properly the way it's supposed to. Well, you know this guy is pretty cheap because uh, processor fans aren't that bad. A good one could run you around 30 bucks, but... Well, what if it's t what if it gets to the point where you blow your where you blow your CPU because don't that leak? that could be that could be a good thing well a bad thing too but you never know we we don't think it's been that but it could it could very well be overheating but we're gonna first give it a good <laughs> overhaul. No, I was gonna say we're gonna first give it a good blowjob. Oh ha! Uh, you didn't catch that with my no, retarded no, giggling. No, I didn't. I didn't catch that. <laughs> Anyways, after we give it a good blowdown, we are gonna be using a nice little piece of tech that I picked up here for my other brother, whose whose power supply blew the hell up. This is a Thermal Take Dr. Power 2, and it will help me determine if his PSU, his power supply, is destroyed. Which is 
but one of the things I can think of has been broken. Everything and on this board except for the video card is all stock, so it's all... The power supply is a custom one, by the oh, way. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, I thought... The I... stock one couldn't handle that, uh... Uh, that's uh, okay. Well, I do have a funny feeling. Like and also I am ninety percent sure it is the graphics card because when I play like games like Subnautica or um, any game really that requires a, a demanding amount of RAM and stuff like that, um, mostly what would happen the video card fan would pick up more so than the CPU fan did, and. And even after gaming out, like say I'm playing Subnautic for like half an hour, it would take about 10, a good 10, 15 minutes for the computer to cool itself to the, to normal, to where it's normal. And so that's, I think over gaming has caused, I mean, usually it's the hard drive that goes on me. So I'm quite happy that the hard drive's still working, but I, I'm So thinking, you did pull that out of a different computer, didn't you? Yes, the I did have to replace the hard drive because um, there were some boot sectors that were too damaged. I couldn't repair them. The, so. the RAM has been upgraded and the video card has been upgraded. The hard drive has been replaced and that's pretty much all that has happened to this baby. This baby is offhand, I can't tell you. I think it's FM2 based, but I'm not 100% sure. I'll have to Google different AMD mother... Uh, chipset types but I think FM2 is about the error of this one so with that being said we are now gonna go outside and have ourselves a ball so welcome back and we are now outside so as you can see it's a little brighter though you kinda could expect us running in pretty quickly but now we could see in all angles this guy's crime against computers so you might be saying that's not too bad right look at that line you can clearly see my finger through that look at that that's ugh. now i'm gonna try and once and once we do that look at that like yeah, it's, it looks like a mouse the, got caught in there and like diced up. See, like, I didn't even realize that was an area where a, a ventilation happened. Yeah, that's a vent for sure, and you got to keep that's those free. Right there, so this is. There. Let's uh, let's help you out here. Oh, I know how to do this. You gotta. So make sure to not do it at an angle or else you'll get some liquid out no and that uh, could I could do it like this I can't do it like that because yeah. that will indeed damage your stuff for sure oh look at that look at all that dust yeah and that was only like a split second let's see how much we can get more out of here look, look at that that dust is gonna like yeah. affect the planet and oh whoa 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 before you get too gung-ho you gotta know that it's not the safest to be blowing your ball bearing fans like that you gotta hold the fans oh, down all right or else you might wear out the motor which is a bad thing oh even the power box has a lot yeah and yeah, again, oh, I the can's starting to get cold. And again, I did mention that I did blow this out not two months ago. And look at all the dust it collected already. Yeah. That's why you have to remain forever vigilant on this, because you never know. It could be the, the amount of dust could be the difference between the life of your computer and death of your computer. And now, just to uh, just to tell you a little more, we gotta say. That's uh, da, 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 da. looks pretty good now. Oh, except for the oh, yeah, the yeah. And make that's, sure to get that upper vent in yeah, there too. Yeah, I think this is that's probably why the graphics card isn't working because I overheated it. It could be that very well could be, but you did say some other problems that gave me pause that made me think that PSU was going. So the beep I'm, code. 
No, you were talking about other things slowing down and crashing the other time, like your hard drive was messing oh, up yeah, or whatever. yeah, yeah, but I think that could have been just as a result of the art. The hard drive from there was stock from the very beginning, so it could have been old age. It could have been, but the amount of problems, I'm just, just not 100% sure on that. So, get another look in there. It's looking it's, better it's looking better but not to the not to the best it could be we might have to pull We're some good. of these parts out I mean yeah. we might have to do an overhaul which is like more time consuming than I'd like but you know we could do an overhaul look at that can you zoom in there do? even that SATA look at that SATA power cable oh Ugh, yeah look at that yeah, just let me get in there. It's fuzzier than this zoom right now. Like that. Uh, as I continue to blow here, it still continues to let out dust. Yeah. Yeah, the best thing we can do is probably take out parts and dust them yeah. off one at a time. We're definitely going to have to do that too. So, that is where you will see us next, actually. So, yeah, look at, look that. at all those cables. Ketchup and mustard, people call them. Like, this only has one one good sleeve. And the rest are just the, ugh. I do I'm, I'm happy with the way they make computers nowadays, though, without the jumper systems. Yeah, because well. Because I could tell you a story about a time I uh, oh. fried a computer CPU by putting the jumpers in the wrong way. Yeah, old people had it harder than us. <laughs> Now that you get, now you could just get a K series SKU on your Intel, and you could Old auto clock it. Might be a little in politically incorrect. Elderly. Anyway, just don't even bring that shit up. Political correctness could go suck a dick. Right. This world is just too sensitive. Yeah, but that's not something for YouTube channels to talk about, because. It still happens in the comment sections, despite... Anyways, there's... There's the aftermath. We're gonna have to get a little rag and clean her up, too. And we're gonna have to do some more blowing on the internals of this, so... Hold this fan down, you can't see it. Oh, Let's that's get okay. a really good angle. Okay, that, that, one, lower that one is the one. Yeah, that blower that style fan, we're gonna have to... Hold that down and really get that sucker clean. See, what I should have done was what I planned to do a while ago. What I wanted to do is buy a new shell and buy a whole new cooling system for it. It probably could have prolonged the life of it at least another five years. Yeah. Even more if I Perhaps. did it proper. But yeah, this this is not exactly a gaming <coughs> case. This is a yeah. stock case that came with the computer when it was bought from the uh, yeah. store. Yeah. So. And... If you saw what we just showed you with our little friend the mouse, which we'll, we, we will... Our friend the mouse... Our friend the mouse. We're gonna have to clean more, but that's all the ventilation. Right there. Right there. And... Back here. That's pretty much it. I think even here too. Eh, uh, well, that does count, but I think also, because there's dust buildup in the bottom here, I'm gonna guess there's at least basic ventilation in the front here too, because there's a nice big wad of dust there. We're gonna have to get some non static, like, cleaning cloths and clean the shit out of this thing. It's gonna be a whole new computer when you guys see it next. Hopefully a running computer and I hopefully it runs better because... Speaking uh, of a whole new computer... Oh, it originally had 6 gigs. I think I got it to 10 gigs. What eight. is it? 8. Okay, I got it to 8. Okay, anyways. Athlon X2 times 4, 620 quad core. It has NVIDIA integrated graphics at least, but yeah, look at that. And that was when Windows 7 first came out. Yeah. 
that was that's the beginning of Windows 7. Running Windows 8.1, but it oh. was so I have to repair the system. So. And then but we even got an OEM key right there. Do you guys remember that? Windows 10 computers don't even have those stickers anymore. Refurbished ones do though, which is kind of weird. Online, but though. yeah. Anyways, so that's your nostalgia, your throwback. Remember when smart car. Yeah, this thing doesn't want to. It's not a video camera, so you can't expect it to do everything. But remember when smart cards and SD cards and all that were the norm? Just look at that in front there. Zip drive and jazz drive. And Any of you guys remember what that is? Anybody from the 90s watching this? The zip drive and jazz drive. That's all I have to say. Good old 90s tech. Yeah, and they were outlasted by the diskette drive, even though they had a lot more storage than it. But that is all for a different time. You know, in the past. Exactly. A long time ago. Well, not long ago. The last I'll time I saw a zip drive working, uh, jazz drive in operation was like 1997 or something. Do you know, uh, well... I did mention this before, but my family owns a company named Winter Art Glass, and they used to have all their archives on their zip drive, and they actually got rid of their zips not too long ago, though it was because they didn't have the hardware anymore to use it with their computer, and that's the only reason. If they had the tech to plug it into new computers, which is only USB and no serial. <laughs> Remember serial phase? Oh, yes. Anyways, they would have. That, that's the wrong zoom. They would have no doubt have actually kept the zip and jazz. Well, they didn't have jazz, but they would have kept their zip drive discs, diskettes. 100 megabytes, I think, which is today's standards not that much at all. Like, you can fit a lot of MP3s on there, mind you. But, both are two different eras. But, anyways, we're not here for nostalgia. We are here to get this shit running. And with that being said, you'll see her when she is sparkling clean. Well, hello again. We're back, and as you can see, there's a cardboard box here. And why we need a cardboard box is cardboard does not conduct electricity, which is good. And why are we needing that? Because we're on the bed because there's no other workstation. So, we're just going to open this up. This has an easy little hatch thing here. So instead of having to screw each individual PCI piece in there you just screw this one down after everything is down that is an HP solution to the problem no in my opinion it's not it's a non-issue really but I mean not really a big everyone hindrance. everyone should have enough screws to do it whatever they need to do like screws aren't that expensive but get over it and and if you provide screws like the five cents they can't be more than five cents. Like, screws aren't that expensive at all. Anyways, so what we're simply doing is we are unbuilding the computer. So that's a giant wait. graphics card. Yes, it is. Got the EVGA. Hopefully, you guys can see this clearly back at home. The the viewfinder is a bit small, and I have it mounted a weird way, but... You want me to be the cameraman? I can do it without shaking. I think we, I think we could do this workstation technique right now. So, we got that there. And, next, we get... And... We had to uh, do a little bit of scrounging because computer manufacturers, especially in Canada, like to use something called a Torx screwdriver bit. If you guys could see that, probably not, but it's a six-pointed star. 
and I think it was made in Canada, which is good. They really don't, uh, you really can't strip them as easily as a regular X or Phillips. But, since they're so uncommon, it's hard to find a freaking screwdriver for them. So, after all this is said and done, I am going to replace his Torx bit screws with uh, some good old fashioned Phillips screws. So, he won't have a problem of having to find someone who happens to have the obscure screw drivers, which is my uncle. Seeing as he owns everything under the sun. On tools like... He could be the king. Well, I don't think he could be king for owning shit, but... And even so, this thing is too small. I thought it was the right one, but it's not. Which is a problem, because these won't undo. Okay, we're just gonna go fix that. So, be right back. So, before I was rudely interrupted by irony, I was saying that they're really hard to find, the screwdrivers, unless you have a gearhead who has every single screwdriver. And torque screwdrivers are, I think, a little more common in vehicles, too. So, as I said that, I tried screwing something and it was a size too small so now I got the right screwdriver and again I'm gonna be replacing his screws with Phillips cause they never hurt me like this like these ones tried to hurt me so well, in, sad. in every instance that I've ever fixed computers it's always been Phillips no and I most I think it's not as much a Canadian thing as a Canadian compact thing cause Compaq and HP, you know how comp HP owns Compaq now. Mm hmm So my uh, I can't remember how old that one was, but it was pretty recent-ish. But need help. I have no idea oh there. Now I See, that's that's the thing with the smaller shell with all these wires you have to yeah. be very careful because if you break any of these wires I could uh, that can be the end of that so you want to so what we're doing here is we're just simply unplugging everything here see and that, that that's when it comes to me building computers and stuff that's the biggest pain in the butt is making sure all the wires are in properly and in their proper spots with all the clutter in a smaller shell and if, that can make things very difficult and if you could see this here you can tell this computer is underpowered because if you look at this, this CPU plug only is four. And you usually use an eight pin CPU plug, which is okay. that one right there, for yeah. overclocking and whatnot. Well, that, this processor can't overclock. Yeah, so if you get a processor that could overclock, it will have an eight pin CPU connector. So that's what you gotta look for if you're into that sort of thing, which most gamers would be, because you got to get yourself the extra horsepower for the extra gameplay. So, we got the... Oh! I thought it... I forgot that I bought a Cooler Master. I thought I bought an EVGA power supply. Anyways, it's a Cooler Master. I think it was a 500 watt, but it says 700 here, so... I'm actually not sure... I'm pretty sure it's a 700 now that I look at it. It doesn't have the wattage slapped right here, so I'm going to assume that the model number 700 signifies that it's 700 watts, which would be a it would pretty make logical sense thing because to assume. Of the, cause I was able to play Subnautica, which is a very, very demanding game, and it's very recent, so... Which actually surprised me, because I thought for sure my computer would blue screen or crash the game. Nah. When I first ran the game, it did crash a few times. I had to rerun the game about five times the first time I ever played it. But it ended up going, and, and it works great. And I can't play it on anything other than minimum quality, though. Anything else would just be too demanding that my computer is not built for. So now we are going to unplug the nitty-gritty. This is front audio, this is USB, 
And this is another USB, it looks like. The front USB 2, it says. So that is for the card reader. And on this board, I do not see... And... Oh, never mind. Make a liar to me. There we go. These are the best things for new computer geeks who are looking to build things. Because, though they're not the most powerful, these things are the easiest because the front connectors, which are a pain in the ass for a lot of new... The OEM case goes exactly with the OEM board, which means the front connectors are aligned into a little plastic thing that you don't even have to think about anything. It's all right there. So, that's the... That's pretty much the only... The only shining light of OEM computers. Just to note, it is pretty much cheaper in all instances to make it yourself, but you will have to have the knowledge. So, you know me, I'm kind of a dumb, dumb dumb, dumb dumb in my brain brain, I guess. You guess guess? I'm not dumb dumb in the bum bum, because I know how to fart pretty well. Like, I could best you in a farting contest. Like, no doubt. Now these SATA plugs, they have this little retention clip, so they were a little bit of pain to pull out, but... Uh, so this hard drive says it's 500 gigabytes, which, uh... It was actually the exact same size, and I think it's the same, uh, it was a Seagate hard drive, it's the same one that I had before, so... Isn't that great the, for uh, a lot of games, the, but... The uh, disk transfer rate was the same too, which is good, so... So it's a 7200? Yes. Good. Anyone wanting to still use a mechanical hard drive, whether it be money or for just for added storage, if you're not using a 7200 RPM hard drive, then you are basically wasting your time. Wasting your life away, waiting for the clicking in the hard drive, because seriously. Alright, so 7200 RPMs is what you want to have. I think that's where I last left off. I kind of had to get that there, because BAM reasons. And that's why what I you do don't want to, What I do people. prefer to do, what I want to do, is eventually get myself in a solid state. Because I know those are just, those are the way to go now. Yeah, I mean, those are, those are speedy. Yeah, nowadays the way the solid state hard drives are and the way technology's going, like, rotating hard drives are becoming slowly a thing of the past. They're not going to be even conventional anymore. You ever give a few years, the solid state hard drives will be the thing. They are the thing always, and, like, they haven't not been a thing. No, I know, for but I mean, but, uh, the mechanical hard drives are for those who don't have the most money, because solid state hard drives are quite a bit more pricey yeah. in comparison. But, but it's worth it. I've used a solid state hard drive computer before. It is so worth that money. If you have the money, get a solid state hard drive if you need to replace make sure, it. Make sure if you have the money, you should you should at least get it for your boot drive. That's That's the main thing. Yeah. And I think it. I think Solid State also has its own built-in uh, security features that these other hard drives don't. As far as uh, protecting your data and stuff like that, I think. Don't quote me on it. I'm not 100% sure. All I know about Solid State is that it's extremely fast. And for gaming, that's exactly what you want. You want your computer to be as peppy as possible. But for the least amount of money. But once again. The solid states you're going to get for the money that you're really probably in niche for, which is probably 30, 40 bucks. Those ones you probably don't want for your games because, well, if this guy has a 500 gigabyte hard drive and that would probably be small for him if he actually could keep his computer running for a long period of time. And there's the motherboard. There the is. engine 
block of your computer. So, all right, let's look at this. With that being said, I want to say that uh, it was. Uh, z -z -z where the hell you confused me? I was you were talking about. La, 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 la. We were talking about solid state hard drives. Yeah. Oh yeah, I was saying this guy has a 500 gigabyte hard drive, which means he's not putting the most on there anyways, but solid state drives are usually for your boot drive and you got like a three terabyte for your for your games, because games are pretty big nowadays, especially some of the more expansive MMOs. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I that's why I'll never buy an Xbox One because most of their games, like even for updates, updates are like 5 gigs each. Game installations themselves are like 25, 30 gigs. And eventually that all adds up and then you just need to buy more and more and more storage. And then before you know it, you spent like $2,000 on storage just for your games. Before you know it, you spent like $2,000 on storage just for your games. Before you know it, you spent like $2,000 on storage. It can, uh, he, it can get pretty expensive. Yeah, you're a little over exaggerating. Yes. 2000, but still, not the best. Though, 200 is more reasonable for that. But, anyways, this motherboard here is called a Pegatron MZN7. Eight. Oh, that's a two. Never mind. M two N seven eight L A. Like, there's no more. There's no more. Eh, third party shit than that. Like, it's not even branded HP on the board. Let us give you some glamour shots. There is the motherboard, Pegatron. No idea who comes up with the names. Like, is it like a robot Pegasus? I don't get it. There's a Cooler Master. Cooler Master was my most trusted brand at that point, so that's probably why I think I had brand loyalties back then. Though well, a lot e of a lot of gamers still have their brand loyalties. Yeah, EVGA. Like Razor and yeah, EVGA. I've tried out their their power supplies and they are rock solid as well so I do trust them as well for the power supplies now and their cheap ones are actually really good for price wise I I built my cousin a computer for just anything in general she doesn't too, do too much gaming but it's a pretty good computer and that one I shoved an EVGA in there and she works perfectly. So, there's glamour shots of the interior. And there's glamour shots of the garbage can. Just in case you want to throw up in there. Because all stock cases are pretty disgusting. Not gonna lie. Like, it's pretty amazing what you could... Like, that's the back panel, too. Look at that. Actually, this might be overkill, but actually what I thought of doing was buying a server case. Really tall. Just, and it's probably just going to be tall enough just so I could put a bunch of fans on it. Yeah, that's pretty... I think that's almost useless to do, but... It's your money for that. So, we got the beautiful front side. Which everyone wants to make sure they're beautiful. <coughs> Sorry. So everyone has their own way of doing things. And HP is to hide everything in bays that slide. So there's USB 2.0 and the front headers for your microphone and sound. And you got them. It was that guy who put that there. And yes. that there. I put the two Apple stickers there. I found them, and I thought, mine, let's, well, not put them to waste. I'll be using this computer for a while, so I just slapped them on there, and there they go. And I like what they did in the past. EVGA had that. This is a nice, solid metal 
No. Not banner. Emblem. Emblem. Yes. You could you could shove on your front and show off that your computer is powered by EVGA. Which it is, and it's beautiful. And I did love putting that on. It made me feel superior in many ways. To all my friends who didn't even know what kind of computer they had. Or yeah, they didn't know anything. The, considering the amount of dough you dropped on the video card at the time. Which at the time when you bought the video card, <laughs> yes, that was the best you can get back then. That was Honestly, I don't think it was. I think this was mid-range. I don't know. $300 video card. It was mid-range at the time. I think there must have been a 580. I think there was higher than 560 Ti. There might have, there might have been, 600 series might have come out by then. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't, I can't remember honestly when I dropped the money on that. Anyways, that is your glamour shot of all the pieces. Now when you come back, they were, will all be clean. So, twiddly. That is the CPU. It's an AM2 chipset. So, that is what you could take from that. And now, that man with the plan, named Stan, but not really. He's gonna do this. Point it right about the CPU. <coughs> it's a little bit justly, so maybe have a hand on the camera too, man. Okay. So, do you know how to put on CPU paste properly? No, I do not. Good. Because I'm gonna teach you what they say is about in the center, you get yourself pea sized, and that's it. That's a pretty big P. And then you just put the CPU fan back on, eh? Yeah. You don't spread, you don't do anything like that. So, how is this on? This was on this way, I do believe. But I don't believe this matters much. It looks like it's symmetrical anyways. Yeah, well, the uh, when I took it off the board, that it is the right way. I know it is. Yeah, it's you want to. It's been slip sliding around a little bit, which isn't the best. But what you want to do, you let's. So you get that retention on, and if you want to sneak around to this side, I'll actually. Right, so I'll do it on this side here. What you got to do is Hold that on. retention. Okay, yeah, okay. okay, make sure it's retained. So I'm correct it on this side again, all right. Yeah, that side goes all right. on. All right. Taking with, it off is much with easier. With the lever up, you put the retention on this side, so it's... And then, you pull the lever down, and it will tighten it onto there. Easy peasy. Solid. I'm solid on there. I pulled up the flash, but the recording doesn't want to use it apparently. So, a little dark for you guys, but not too bad. So, that's about it. We just wanted to show you that there, because there's a lot of people who whine about different things, like, hey, you should do it this way or this way. I've seen a video where they tested it, and offhand, it doesn't really. Yeah. Doesn't really. It doesn't really matter. Unless you use too much or too little. So we used the right amount so it is perfect. So with that being said, the next thing you'll see is everything back in order. We're in the middle of our reconstruction process, but we have to take a little pause for the cause and check out one of our potentially dead zones, which is the Cooler Master CPU, PSU. I keep mixing that up. <coughs> it's not that hard, but I do it anyways. So, <coughs> we're going to be using this. 
As I mentioned earlier, it's the Dr. Power 2 from Thermal Tech. And I have successfully, successfully tested and confirmed one dead PSU with it. I've confirmed a lot more alive ones than dead ones, which is a good thing because it's better to find alive ones because that means you don't have to spend like 50, 60 bucks for your power supply all over again. So, what you want to do is you plug all of one of each. So, there is CPU power, PCI Express power. Molex power, SATA power, and the 20 plus 4 pin power. So you connect all these there. <coughs> we will be using, unfortunately for us, we, well, this is more of a me thing, but I, in my past, when I bought this, I didn't find what specifications it needed for its PS for its PCI Express power. So its PCI Express power wasn't compatible because <coughs> it only had one four. And I needed a three. A four and a three. So wait. I think I'm stupid. I'm just dumb. I don't know why I use... Nah, I was just dumb in my youth. Okay, that might be why something's dead. I use Molex connectors and those, but I can use these all the time. Okay. So with everything plugged in, with this thing looking like a heart with all the things popping out, you gotta make sure Either your power supply is unplugged if it doesn't have a master switch or even if it does, but either unplugged or plugged in with the switch off until you're all done. And when you're done, you simply switch the switch on and the thing will go blue. And you click the button and we'll show your voltages. And then you hold your button. And then it will cycle through. And it just goes through the test one by one. So if I could. So it just cycles through like this and shows you. And if, every, if anything is not to voltage. The screen will turn from this blue to a red. So, like, for example, turning this off will make it out of voltage. And... There. That's what it will look like. With the different... with the wrong voltage. It will tell you which voltage is the error. And you could figure out if... And what on your motherboard has, on the PSU, sorry, has been destroyed or is, uh, not destroyed, but, uh, blown out. <coughs> okay, hello. So, I took the liberty of making sure everything was working, everything's plugged in, and I'd say I did pretty good cable management, I mean... All the, all the good parts are, pr are protected from cables flying into them. That SATA cable is a little precarious, but I have my hopes that it won't do anything bad. So, now the moment everybody and their dog has been waiting for. This is the Glamour Shot. There we go. So I did the liberty of... Well, I just turned it on and it worked, so... I don't know, maybe he's a dum-dum. 
Or maybe something was actually hindered by overheating issues, which could be a very real thing. So, this might be just a lesson on make sure to clean your shit, but I do have benchmarks for you tomorrow. And I will be using Ida64, and I will probably be using, uh, what's that one? The one with Fire Strike. I think that one is, uh, uh, Future Mark, yeah. So I'll be using that, Future Mark, and also, uh, Ida64 to test the CPU and the GPU and make sure that it still works fully because he very easily could have screwed things up as well. Okay, so it's been a couple days since the last scene here and sorry for again being a little late but I just gotta say that it's kinda my brother had his birthday yesterday so and that's the brother this computer's for as well. So, it's kind of nice that we got to celebrate party. His computer is working fine, so he doesn't have that headache to deal with on his birthday, which is always nice. So, let's get into this. And what we're going to get into is, now that the computer's fixed, how good is it? So... The processor is, what was it, Nathlon 2 X4 620, which the number on, like, the, the manufacturer year on the chip itself said 2008, <coughs> which means, uh, do the math, tick tock, tick tock, eight years have passed since that processor has been released. So I got my Unfortunately, not professional enough to have a full version of Ida64, but we got the Ida64 open, and we, well, I did all the pre-tests, no, all the tests beforehand, so hopefully that's good, this viewfinder is kind of crap, so let's get a nice zoom on the numbers, and Sorry for shaky cam, might have to cut this out. Okay, point right here. Okay, so the yellow one is his, so it will just be on the bottom here. So, what do these numbers tell us? So they're around a two core Athlon 64 X2 Black Edition, which I believe is a high end. And if you could see this far, no, you cannot. It says what their different memory types are for the builds that are here. So, da da da. Slightly above it, it's the 2 core Athlon 64X2 Black, and that is dual DDR2. So, ours is dual DDR2 as well. So, okay, I scrolled up a little bit. Let's make sure that's in the middle there. So, what that means is it's in around this, that, and a 4 core. Core 2 Extreme, which are the high end, and that's with DDR3. So it's even up and kicking with the with the big dogs, with the newer. And that's just with memory. So if we go to CPU Queen, we could see. And let's scroll down. Da, 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 da. Sorry for the flashy. So, CPU Queen, eh? <coughs> so, it's by Xeon, which is pretty good. DDR2 Xeon, so an older one. But if you see 19005, 
19545 at an A10 7850K, which I think is a newer. I think that's 2012, something like that. So it's really up there with. So high end past is. It's around medium end current for AMD. And let's go to the six times 64 ray trace. I think all of us are losers on that one, except the higher ends. So, it's in with uh, Core 2 Extreme again. And if you go down though, I think there was a couple There's that AM Athlon 64 again. But there was a couple ones where you saw, I think it was, or it was this one. I can't remember which one it was offhand, but yeah, like this. A10 7850K. A lot of these tests, this computer is scoring higher than newer computers of newer Athlon, <coughs> newer uh, AMD chips. So, it's definitely no slouch. It's definitely better for your money in the long run to buy high-end. And as it depreciates over time, you're still gonna get better because an A10, you could probably get a computer like that for 500 300? I'm not sure. But those are pretty expensive still. So if you invest the good amount of money in there right away, then you'll be better in the long run. So, <clears throat> we're gonna have to do a little cutsy doodles, but when we return, you will be seeing. The fire strike, so that will be for GPU testing. And then we will see how good the GPU is rated in comparison. And you might be surprised on that one too. So, see you then. Alright. So those are the results. Hopefully you can see that on screen properly. 3608. Graphic score was 4343. 20 FPS on the first one, 17 on the second one. Mainly gets lower physics and even low with combined. Combined test being as low as 7.51. So not the most ideal for extreme. Well, this was just regular Fire Strike, but we sh we could try for some older titles as well, because there is the benchmark for where's the mouse here? You have like too many mouse mice on here. So Fire Strike Ultra and Extreme, we're not gonna try. So we could try Skydiver. But first, let's check out the results and compare results online. So, his results say that indeed they're better than a gaming laptop. And the gaming laptop is that AMD A10 again. And it ha the gaming laptop is a 7970M. So, laptop specs. But it doesn't beat it by much. But the minimum spec for HTC Vive is i5-4590 which and the GTX 970. And those are modern day. So this is definitely a respectable score. Sorry. This is definitely a respectable score for a computer of 8 years. So... If, has my username because it's my Steam I'm currently on. Da, da, da. 
So, look at that there. Pegatron Corporation. I have no idea which third party that is, but the board right on it says made in China. So, it works pretty good for that. 45 nanometer process, that's ancient in comparison. Because I think they're down to 12 now, or they're almost down to 12. So, so it's no slouch. It doesn't have overclock, because as you saw with the, hopefully, hopefully it turned out well. The motherboard uh, glory shot. Hopefully you saw that the CPU only has one plug, not like one four plug, not two making it an eight pin. Because this board, and probably this chip as well, has no overclock potential. But for a non-gaming grade to be this good is really good. Now it could be that the graphics card is pulling most of the weight and on this test it would be but as you saw with the other IDA64 that indeed the processor ain't no slouch either if you were to buy this brand new you could probably be looking at 350 easy for a computer of this quality which for an 8 year old computer is high praise so with that being said we will now jump to the conclusion so so conclusion time so we're talking about this computer we did a nice little repair turns out sometimes like regular men your computer needs a good blowjob now and again to keep itself stress free that joke I came up with a day ago so I'm not that clever Anyways, so with that being said, the computer does not turbo its claw, uh, its uh, fans nearly as hard as it used to, though that's with the side panel off because he was too dumb to bring the side panel with him, so we can't test ventilation that way, but I did do a number on the, on the cable management so it will be a lot better for that as well but we can't but you can't tell for sure but now we get into why he is he's a little poorer than me for starters but a lot of people he's kind of Like, just for an example, we'll say that if something were to happen, lightning to strike, and his computer just gone, he he doesn't have the funds to replace it. That's that's just where he is at the current moment. So, repair versus buy new. So, honestly, with a computer this old, anything could have went wrong, but lucky it was just a cleaning job that was needed but anything really could have went wrong so what if he like we did the testing for the power supply so if the power supply went wrong what then everything could have went wrong if only the, the graphics card would have went bad I used one he could found equivalent maybe hundred bucks about equivalent to his current graphics card but the brand new one which would run him a lot better than this for sure would be around 300 350 to get a nice 970 about there might be a little cheaper now that the 10 series has come out <clears throat> but what if his CPU went that would be cheap that would be like fifty sixty dollars AMD CPU and motherboard combos he could have probably got a nice combo that would work even better than current for pretty cheap those are easy to replace but 
with a person with little means to gain enough money to do so. A repair depends on the parts. We only f spent nine dollars, and that's only because we decided we'd better we'd be safer than sorry and replace the CPU uh, thermal paste. But other than that, nine bucks is not bad. So, with that being said, does it do everything it wants it to do? Of course not. If it was more money, would it be better to replace or repair? It all depends on what it is. If it's just the GPU and everything else is fine, then he could repl replace that first and keep everything else until he gets enough money. It all depends on which breaks down. That's, I guess, the point of everything. So, I'd say power supply could have killed everything, but if it didn't, just replace the power supply. Motherboard, motherboard and chip go together because this is older tech, so it would probably be a lot harder to find a good motherboard that would fit his CPU so he could get those two new at the same time. But that brings in one more thing. His rig is running DDR2, not DDR3. An older style, which means that if he were to replace it with modern, he'd also have to look into some new memory modules that could run them mm, let's say I think 16 gigs I saw for uh, $60 or four sticks of four so it gets more pricey the, mo the more you have to think about it because <clears throat> this is older older tech if it was old enough and it was like when DDR3 first came out, then he could get away with things, but if it's a generation behind, you're completely screwed. So, we're just lucky everything worked out for him. Happy faces all around. Nothing else seems to be bad at all, which is really nice. There was that one little thing you saw in the video where uh, I had the graphics card plugged into two different adapters which didn't need to do that. That could have been a factor causing his weird freakouts. I don't think it was. I think because because if you didn't see in the video, well you should have, his motherboard is oriented a different way because HP made everything upside down. So instead of blower blowing down, it blows up. So with that, it could have been that enough dirt, enough dust congealed in there to stop the blower because gravity would pull the dust down. And if it's not blowing hard enough, then it could just clog it. Blowing down, this is just from my brain, so if there's any uh, evidence to the contrary, then uh, discount all I just said. But that's what I think about the whole situation. It could have been my fault, but it worked for me for four years before I handed it over to him. So it didn't blow up in that time. So I say it wasn't my fault. With that being said, though, what can he keep? If he wants to go for a newer rig, I suggest he would keep the graphics card because I did actually make a rig for my cousin with an inferior graphics card, but it got a better score with Firestrike, and that's because of his, the CPU. The CPU, I believe, is definitely his bottleneck, but as you saw there, new CPUs still sometimes don't cut it, so you got to spend a little extra cash to get the performance you want. So with that being said, 
I guess. Look for used i7s or something. Always source parts properly, and this is a little rambly, but it's a conclusion. So, what I think about the situation is we did good. So, with that being said, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, then I would ask for a like because this is the first new thing that's happened in a while. You got just being honest on this. I definitely do love this kind of work, but it is a little harder when I'm living not under my own roof, but under my uncle's, because he does, he doesn't like me to hoard, and that is something that would happen if I was allowed to, because I do, I wish I could keep a lot of different systems around and play with them and do all that kind of work. But, it's not in the stars right now, so, this is a unique experience for me. Temporarily. Hopefully we fix that soon, but, it's unique and different, so, if you like this video, I can maybe go over my main rig, and I do have a different rig I'm working on. Just something in the works. But, if you want a video on those, then you could drop a like and maybe a comment on that. And, I guess all that's left to say is with a million other people you could be watching at this very moment. I thank you for watching me. So, that's my time. See ya.